Hello, health seekers. Welcome to another episode of the Keto Pro Podcast with myself, Richard Smith. Today, I am joined with Sean Sacco Sakonofsky. Sean is a South African endurance cyclist, uh, and Sean, uh, against what many others would consider optimal nutrition, is zero carb or at least highly low carb. Um, welcome on board, Sean. Thanks for coming on board. Thank you very, very much for, for having me and also the opportunity to to share my story and also convey my message. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this since we touched base um, earlier in the week. Yeah, super excited for this one. So, Sean, would you like to tell the viewers uh, a little bit about, the, uh, about your story, your background? Uh, I know we were just chatting briefly about um, why you came into the low-carb sort of environment. Uh, and why you've adopted that lifestyle, but uh, let's hear it from uh, from the horse's mouth. Okay. Um, well, where it all kind of began was, um, I would I would say of something of of interest for yourself. I I um I got fascinated with nutrition when I did a year of bodybuilding um, twenty three years ago. Wow. Um, and um, I was naturally aspirated <laughs> and um, I, I couldn't grow. And um, I used to train with a, a, a very well-known amateur bodybuilder here in South Africa by the name of Trevor van Skalkveig, who, who wasn't naturally aspirated. And, um, but he knew about bodybuilding nutrition and he, and, and I just struggled, I battled to grow. And um, he said to me, Sean, I see what you eat when you come here and I know what you eat when you finish because there was the, the pre pre meal and the post meal, which I just completely negated. And he kind of laughed and thought it was a joke that I used to come with this carbohydrate bar and I did con uh, um, consume carbs in those days, but he told me you just don't eat. And so I said, well, what do I eat? So he says, well, tell me about your, what you eat so I just told them I have oats in the morning and then I might have a little baguette at lunch and then I have a dinner you know so he says but you're just not gonna grow so anyway to cut a long story short I ended up consuming in in, in between my meals um, a, a bowl of rice to serve for four people and 20 to 30 eggs so that was my consumption um, I, I remember, I recall my consumption during one day was all of that plus my breakfast, which was 150 grams of, of oats. And I sometimes used to throw a can of tuna in there. I used to have a, um, you know, like a baguette chicken Subway sandwich. In between the meals, I'd have five or six or, or sometimes 10 eggs um, and, and, uh, and the rice. Um, and then before, I'd have like a little pasta salad before I, I trained. But I managed to literally put on 10 kilograms in a matter of weeks in 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 in, in mass. I mean, I, I stand at five foot nine, five foot ten, and I went up to to 96 kilograms. My biggest bench was four reps of 140 kilograms, and it all it all boiled down to the to nutrition. I was taking creatine, I was taking pro, protein supplements back back in those days, what was available, but um, but I I I didn't uh, I did I. I didn't really grasp the nutrition. And when I saw the profound effects that food can make, it sparked my, my, my interest. So much so, I even started selling supplements out of the boot of my car, creatines and proteins. And in fact, I made, I made the salary. I made my salary. in, well, I made double what I was earning back then out of the boot of my car, literally selling supplements. And um, I really do believe in supplementation. Um, I, I always have. Um, and so much so that my obsession with nutrition basically sustained through that period of time, getting back on the bike, looking at what was available from nutritional, nutritional understanding. And... Um, I, my, my late father had a health store. He was a pharmacist. I grew up in a, in a pharmacy. So I grew up um, a, with the understanding of, uh, of medicine or the application of Western medicine, uh, the application of um, 
vitamins to help boost your immunity if you're going to be taking an antibiotic at a very young age. So I always had some sort of interest ground, um, grounded in nutrition and, and health. And I've always been an active person throughout my life. There's probably six months in 1992 when I wasn't active. But nutrition always was an interest of mine. Um, then we jump to 2006 and uh, I decided um, that the understanding of health nutrition and cycling, because I was cycling again and um, was very limited. So I, I started a supplement brand in, in 2006, which aided in boosting immunity and, and, and looking at deficiencies in, in, in endurance sports and cycling. And then I partnered with uh, another another crowd and they brought a very sign inverted commas scientific aspect to it and the the drive of carbohydrate started to grow within within the the brand i'm not going to mention the brand's name I'm not gonna make <laughs> any, any uh, advertising um and during 2009 and 2010 i discovered I was wheat intolerant and gluten intolerant so much so I battled to take a shit all of my life and there's a story which I've spoken about in podcasts before that when I went to to Israel um, when I left school my father my late father being a pharmacist gave me some emodium which is to block diarrhea and I recall saying to him Dad, what is this for? He says, if you get the runs. I said, Dad, if I get the runs, it's a blessing. Okay. Because I was perpetually, I grew up with bread and wheat and all of this uh, uh, um, foodstuffs which cause constipation. And I, I and during that period in 2009, I, I discovered that this was the case and I gave up gluten and wheat. So, so I stopped. It was kind of, eating a salad at the pizzeria, you know, because this is where people whom I associated with would go out to eat towards the pasta party and that, and so on and so forth. I had a natural predisposition to basically uh, um, veer away from carbohydrate and it, 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 it was almost natural. So when somebody said to me, did you battle to become ketogenic? I don't recall any difficulty because I think post the, 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 um, the realization and not eating that carb and not eating that uh, because m the major I started that's when I started reading ingredient ingredient labels on 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 almost e everything because even in meat products you get wheat and gluten and and so on and so forth so I started all the way back then in, uh, really reading um, ingredients and being a supplement uh, um, uh, a manufacturer per, per se. I understand about the Consumer Protection Act and I understand what goes into supplements and how it should be uh, um, presented on the on the back on the back of the label. So the the attraction to carbs completely waned, and um, I used to get a, a stash of supplements from the company because I wasn't the majority shareholder anymore by that stage, and and it literally used to just sit in my shelf and. I, I never I never used it. And then um, I eventually sold out of the company because um, it's kind of, you know, if I, if I don't wear socks anymore, I'm not, how can I sell it? You know, it's, 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 it, it, it got to that point where I realized that there was just no belief, no, it's time to move on. So um, over that period, um, my late father was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and my father all of his life used to preach health but never really practiced health meaning that he was a big carbohydrate consumer in fact both my family mother and father's side all suffered from cancers or the majority of them they came to cancer as well as cardiovascular disease. I watched my father's father, my grandfather, have a heart attack in front of me at the age of four or five. Nice. Um, um, so, and I, I, I've never ever, I'm not, an, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not an academic. I didn't study academia as a, as a famous uh, um, uh, um, 
environmentalist said, uh, somebody who's, who does peer reviewed studies um, is not a scientist who just always talk, is it peer reviewed, is it peer reviewed, that's an academic. I'm not an academic because, because unfortunately I see the majority of the, me the medicalness in the sports science world always referring to peer-reviewed studies and peer-reviewed just basically means people who think the same. That's effectively at the, in a nutshell what it, what it is. So being said, saying that I'm not an academic, I have never studied a certain institution and acquired a nice certificate stating that I can, I can do my homework and I always present my work at the end of the day at a time in a timely fashion. Um, however, I had this light bulb moment and I said, well, there's something wrong here. Obviously there is, there is a bit of lunacy going on or madness. And the madness is a culmination of, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And that was the epiphany light bulb moment. And I said, it's in the food that we're eating. They all eat a high carb, low fat, this, you know, fruit, vegetables, all of this. Um, and um, incidentally, <clears throat> which mustn't go unnoticed, I was born to a vegetarian mother and father, not by choice, but they were not affluent. My father was a medical student, pharmacy student. Uh, my mother was a, a ballet teacher. Um, and there wasn't money in the family and they couldn't afford meat. So in my during the time I was in my mother's womb. And funny enough, um, I just saw now a, a, a post recently that um, skewed teeth is a, is, is that you get as a, as a child is, is basically from malnutrition in the womb. Um, which is interesting because I had this incredible gap. I should have been a wealthy man at the size of the gap. I had braces as a youngster, um, but uh, I, I was also born deaf. I was born deaf owing to ear infections in the middle ear, the ear ossicles, the anvil, the stirrup, and the hammer. They wouldn't vibrate. They were impacted with wax. So I, I had 11 ear operations and four grommet replacements. Oh. And then the period leading into my teenage years, I used to get gamma globulin injections to boost my immunity. Uh, I was forever being uh, having upper respiratory tract infections as a, as a kid. I was always away from school for at least one or two days a month. True story. Because my father, being a Western medicine pharmacist, would just give me um, antibiotics. My father lost his business in, in um, when I was still at, at home and there wasn't this red, readily supply, but there was no money. We had to leave, I had to leave the house, go and get a job, work for myself. And then I started to eat for myself. And all of a sudden I stopped getting sick. Wow. Okay. Nice. And that's, that's and I honestly believe was because I was eating very clean meals, even though it's canned tuna, I was, I was eating meals, which, which, wasn't making me sick and I was I was naturally reducing my fruits and veg and all of that kind of stuff because um and I stopped I stopped me um getting sick jumping back to the passing of my father and having this realization that it's in the food I just I was really at that stage practicing the paleo diet which had a little bit of fruits and veg and I had broccoli and and, and I, was, I, was, I was also having spinach and, and nuts and that kind of thing. And, and I also got kidney stones. Yeah, oxalates. From the spinach. oxalates. Yeah. <laughs> from the oxalates. And when I was admitted to hospital and the urologist who came to in, in, uh, inspect the little uh, stone that I passed in the cordless cup, went to his office and he, I'll never forget it. He was more interested in the protection on my phone and then he googled it he was asking what supplements i take I'll, uh, i was taking vitamin d3 say so google yeah i think you got it from the vitamin d3 you must stop taking vitamin d3 yep true story true story i discovered it i discovered it that it, what what it was okay and how i discovered it was i was i carried on i stopped the vitamin but i was eating high amounts of, of, of almonds which has got the highest oxalates or oxalates of all tree nuts and I was coming back in 2016 from a trip to England and I got this terrible kidney attack and, and I'd literally been munching because it was convenient, cheap, 
was keto, you know, it's, it's, it's a, and I got a, I know what kidney stones feel like. And I got an attack second six love and I just realized, and I started doing my own research. So, um, th so I was ketogenic back, uh, up until I think a, a year ago, I started uh, toying with the, the carnivore diet, but I, also had a natural predisposition to veer away from plant products. I had a natural predisposition to eat meat, fish, um, and, 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 and less pro uh, plant products. I could isolate the plant products to the English cucumber that I used to consume in huge amounts because it was like my chocolate. I developed such a sweet tooth that the English cucumber reminded me of, of the watermelon I used to eat as a child because your, your, your tooth becomes so sensitive to sweetness. Um, cinnamon became sugar. It was like, whoa, this stuff, it's like incredibly sweet. So, so that's basically the motivation factor was, I don't want to die. I don't want to die young, okay? Um, I, 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 I watched my father literally suffer from cancer and waste him away to, a, to a, 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 an emaciated, he looked like he came out of Auschwitz uh, concentration camp. I carried him to the toilet back and forth in my arms like a baby, and I didn't want to go that way. So that was my motivation initially to switch from taking in the carbs to, um, to, to becoming ketogenic and primarily be utilizing fat as my fuel and not carbohydrate. And then only later during my journey, I, I, I came across um, Sam Apple, who wrote the book Ravenous, which basically showed, showed the link between um, insulin and cancer, which was a study, a microbiology study done by the famous um, Otto Warburg, who was uh, um, a, 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 um, a Jewish gay scientist in Nazi Germany who survived the, the 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 persecution and 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 because Hitler found fascination or found um, the, the the work to his advantage to keep to keep this gay Jew alive um, to, during during Nazi Nazi Germany. Inter interestingly enough, like um, Ansel Keys's work in 1956 being sort of overlooked and lost, the work that Otto Warburg Wer Wer did became overlooked and lost, um, which we can definitely touch into my conspiracy theories later on in the conversation. So the going on in, into the journey with regards to um, the performance aspect of it, that only happened, I would say, in, 19, sorry, in 2018, which I would say five years on. So once again, people ask me, how long did it take me to adapt and feel the advantages? I wasn't really interested in endurance. I was pre my, uh, in my cycling um, career or cycling interest and fascination, I was more interested in time trialing, which is 30 to 40 kilometers distance. And I used to say that my, um, my the wheels fall off after 41 Ks. Uh, it's like no longer. Um, if I did a 100-kilometer ride, um, it would be like maybe once or twice a year. And um, nowadays, it's kind of only after 100 kilometers do I feel like I'm actually warming up and ready to go. Um, and I honestly believe that a lot of it has got to do with the type of energy carbohydrates used to supply me. I recall very uh, uh, many, many moments of just inhaling um, these carbohydrates gels 10 kilometers into the ride, like a human blending machine. And I haven't even started. It's just like, you know, the, 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 the sugar, the, the, the glucose level in your, in your system is just doing this. And you're just reaching for that, you know, the, to, to prevent that panic attack of that hunger coming on. And getting back to, the the performance aspect i only kind of discovered with this advantage the secret weapon per se in 2018 when i was invited to do a grand fondo in in france 
which consisted of 178 kilometers with 5,000 meter elevation gain, which is very substantial. And um, I, I took along with me two, I think they were carb killer bars. They were one of these very low carbohydrate bars. Um, uh, I, I called them keto approved bars. And um, I took them along with me. And I think the, there was 208 calories per bar. Um, I, ate, I ate both bars, so they so call it 416 calories. I had a cappuccino. We stopped off on the side of, of one of these coffees and I had a cappuccino. So there's probably 80 calories worth of milk in there. Um, and then um, I also had some salami at one of these um, food stops because there was these sugary products all over the place, you know, and it was all free and stuff. But I found it very novel that they've got some salami there. So I, I just thought, you know, I wasn't trying to prove anything. I was literally just eating it for the novelty factor of having salami at this event. So I had some of that. So I think if I had, say, six to 800 calories on the day and I burned, I think, well over four or 5,000 calories, it was a lot. And the Paralympian cyclist who was, to his credit, he also had uh, one leg, but he was a, he's a formidable cyclist. Don't ever let that um, fool you. He rode 466 kilometers in one day in a total time of 12 hours. I mean, he's a flipping machine, this, this guy, okay? It was um, 200 odd kilometers out and then back they had lunch and they, and they came back. It was all flat, but I mean, he's a, he's a real machine. But he bonked like you cannot believe. Uh, it was Coca-Cola after Coca-Cola. And I just witnessed this, this perpetual consumption of the sugar to maintain this energy. And I was fine. I mean, I ended up having to push him up uh, up the ways um, in the last uh, I think two or three kilometers um, after 100 you know and, uh, and 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 nursing them all the way all the way back so I I think I think I prove which is the more effective uh, um, energy uh, uh, source um, just over there so that was kind of the spark with regards to um, I kind of like this long distance stuff and that's that's how it started. Then I met this lovely um, young, um, uh, well, younger than me, um, uh, British lady. She came to Cape Town. Um, she's a cyclist, and we had this little kind of chit chat. And she challenged me to ride more kilometers than her during the week when she went back to. And that was also 2018. And so I, I started riding 100 kilometers a day. And I was riding 100 kilometers a day. But I was writing it in circuits. And the reason why I was doing it is because just in case I do bonk, I could, it's an easy, it's a short, it's a, the radius to get back home is, is, is short. I wasn't bonking. I was comfortably riding these 100 kilometer rides per day. And I wasn't getting hungry. And this is really, really bizarre. So I think to my advantage is I don't, really follow people i keep to myself and i listen to my own inner thoughts and i have a tremendous amount of thoughts which maybe we'll touch on later so i decided to say well how far can this actually go you know everyone is you know you need to take in these you know if you watch all these bicycle programs and they tell you how to fuel fuel up for your rides you need to consume every 20 minutes you need to have this um, um, I think it's you need to have solids in the first say three hours and you need to have I've even forgotten the, the whole procedure and strategy and I just thought to myself I don't even eat anything and I'm riding harder I, I, my, my average speed is faster than that and I'm riding higher elevation gains hmm. then what what is this um, am I superhuman? I must be. I'm, I must be superhuman. I'm a. I'm a complete monster beast. No, I'm not. We'll get into that later. Um, so I'm just riding these hundred kilometers day in and day out, five times a week, doing basically five hundred kilometers a week. And um, uh, the Jordanian Tourism Board in 2019 reaches out to me and say, "Hey, we like your content. We like what you're doing." Would you like to come and do this race in Jordan? It goes from the Dead Sea to the Red Sea. It's one long 198 kilometer ride. And uh, and it was wonderful. And they 
They put you up in the most beautiful hotels. They treat you like absolute royalty. Um, I've never been treated that well. I was like, I was kind of gob gobsmacked how well they treated me. Um, and um, I, um, I was there just basically to highlight the country. It was a press tour, basically. But I let everyone go. In the, uh, My goal, incidentally, was not to win the race. My goal was simply to ride 198 kilometers without refueling. Okay. Um, and I had my brother-in-law there in the, he came as a photographer and we had, I had a backup vehicle as well with me. So I, I, I effectively had a witness, two witnesses and also the commissaires also just couldn't believe it. You don't eat anything because when they, when we were in the front bunch, uh, I, I broke away for the first 30 or 40 Ks um, and I rode way above my FTP, burning up any possible glycogen stores whatsoever I had in my, in my system. Um, I wasn't even eating, I mean, there was not even, a, I had some nuts, which could have had carbs in it. And, and, and uh, I sampled some of their very expensive honey as a kind of a, a political goodwill gesture and a, yeah, just to show that, you know, you know I'm, not, I'm not so alien to you or whatever. But that was two or three days prior to the race. And I'm off literally riding full gas for 30 to 40 Ks. Eventually the lead group catches me. And um, I tell them to carry on because I want to wait for the, the 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 ambassadors from Germany and I think Italy that were there just to finish with them. Just because I didn't come to win, I just came to kind of illuminate the race per se. But by that stage, after hundred k's, they were so far behind, over an hour and a half behind, and I told my car to go back to get a time check, and also I was literally on half a bottle. I didn't, I thought there were 15 minutes behind. Okay. I, I hadn't done a proper race like this in years and years and years. So I, I didn't really know my ability and, 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 uh, um, and, and how fast we were actually traveling. Yes. I was looking at my computer, but I wasn't really conscious of it. An hour and a half later, and I was basically running out of water in the Jordanian de desert. And I realized these guys aren't coming back. Uh, 15 minutes had passed and these guys aren't coming back. So I started to start putting pressure on the pedals again because I didn't want to die on the side of the road with all these camels and stray dogs and everything. And I put put foot again. And eventually I started to catch the four people. I could see them in the distance. I started to catch the four people up in, in front of me and eventually my car came back and gave me water and, and I carried on going. <clears throat> and unfortunately, my disc brakes completely packed up um, they, they that got damaged in the uh, transit and because we were at uh, 400 meters below sea level at the Dead Sea we had enough pressure so it, it felt like the brakes worked but because we came out of the the, 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 the altitude um, my, my brakes completely failed and in the last four Ks where the corner started <clears throat> I went full gas into a, into a curb and crashed um, so that kind of kind of destroyed my my pursuit back to the the four the four leaders. Um, I eventually got back on my bike and, and, and finished a credible fifth overall. But I did it without any fuel whatsoever. I was completely euphoric at the end of the, the ride. I, I couldn't believe I'd I'd done that. I hung around for like a little bit, and then the driver took me back to this beautiful five star hotel, and I packed my my bike away, and then about two after showering and everything, I had a handful of these keto nuts that I got from a supermarket. Literally after four thousand eight hundred calories, and that's basically what I ate. There was no like, I need food, hyperglycemia, uh, uh, you know, it's like completely falling over uh, and being completely debilitated from energy. So that really sparked my interest. That was like, how far can this go? That was the trigger moment. Come back to South Africa, and um, we have that um, we have that twenty twenty. We have that. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And um, so we kind of locked down, and I didn't have a smart train. Um, or anything to write. So I just started doing push-ups and sit-ups. Uh, in, in, I'm a loner, so being locked up is not, being, not a problem for me as long as I've got Wi-Fi and YouTube and, 
and conspiracy documentaries to feed my imagination. I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy. Eventually, an acquaintance came. He knew the he knew how important it was for me to ride, so he bought me a set of rollers, which is basically these devices that the track cyclists used to 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 warm up pre pre track um, days. And I had a I've got a, a lovely partnership with them. Um, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a. a, a a shameless punt stage of cycling, you know. They give me my car meters and um, a link to the, the Zwift indoor trainer. You can do the Bluetooth link. And <clears throat> because you've got a, a, an accurate power meter, you you generate the watts. So the harder you push, the more the, the, it, it works on strain gauges. So, I, I mean, I could, I, I would spin out at like say 500, 600 watts. So it's, it, it's, it's kind of like, do, 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 you know, in your biggest gear. But I could comfortably sustain 180 to 200 watts um, with a very high cadence. And I hadn't ridden these rollers as a kid since a kid. So I started off small, 45 minutes, <clears throat> an hour, an hour 15. Eventually got to two hours. Eventually got to three hours. Um, eventually I got, and I would ride in my little kitchenette. I live in a very small little apartment and, and I put in my kitchenette with the counters balancing there. And eventually my skills got so good. I could literally ride without the hands on the handlebars. And I was doing live chats on Instagram because, you know, everyone needed the entertainment during the lockdown. Then I got to four hours, five hours, six hours. And I said, right, I've done six or well, basically six hours on the road. I want to do a nine hour zero refueling ride. Okay um to bring awareness to the ketogenic diet with the noakes foundation my partnership my the beginning partnership with the noakes foundation and and also i did it i had a, a um a medical aid gap cover company who brought a little cameraman in and i did this event in their offices with 12 witnesses so i was in, locked in this room they just brought me the water and people would come in every so often to to check me out, um, and I rode there um, for, for for in fact ten hours. Uh, wow. It was ten hours. Okay, um, but I had really done the nine hours to check to check if I could do it at home. I I, I, I I'm not going to go and enter something if I'm if I'm not confident I'm going to go and do it. Um, and um, yeah, I I I. I was actually feeling quite shitty the the day of the day of the event, and I just rolled down. And because I, I wanted to ride on, they had to go home, and I slept in the office block. They brought me a, a blow up mattress, one of these lilos, and, and I slept in the office block. I had I, I had I had some MCT oils, which I ref, which I had. That's the only thing I had. It was like not even a. It, it was, uh, it was not even a hundred mils of it, and I drank that. Um, I passed out for four hours, and be, when we had the the, the when I, I hit the curfew that you can go onto the streets again, jumped on my bike and I rode home. And I was power on the way home, and I felt like I was fine. Um, and that was basically, um, this is ridiculous. How far can this now go? Okay, so it was, I I I just I, I felt like I had a new toy. Um, and the toy was, I want to see how far I could push this. So I started increasing my mileage on the bike. I started doing 500 weeks, 600 kilometer a week, 700 kilometer a week. I think maybe there was even an 800 kilometer a week without refueling. Okay. And so I'm not even, so the, I mean, it, it, it's not, it's not, I'm going home and I'm, there's no carbohydrate like to restore my glycogen levels. There's, I'm, I'm eating, Effectively, I'd be eating a steak when I got home, you know, or or some form of uh, animal a product. There was no this massive caloric uh, uh, um, consumption of uh, to to it. Obviously, my body's eating into itself, and I kind of tr I was trying to figure out where was this energy coming, and and I have got good muscle mass, so obviously the body's going to be eating whether it's healthy or not. It's not that's not the question. The question is. We have sold this lie that you need carbohydrates to fuel your rides, okay? And whether or not the science leads to state, you know, the science, what is that science? I question it again. It shows you that you perform at greater intensities with carbohydrates. You know, the average weekend warrior, I just, I did a post the other day that according to Pro Cycling Stats, which is this global um, 
re reference website saying that there are a culminate there's a total of 780 women and male world pro tour cyclists active um, today 780 so let them have the carbohydrates and you eat and you have a low carb diet and be healthier because the average weekend warrior who's riding a bike out there okay is not hitting the zone fives and all the sixes or the sevens depending on what you, heart rate uh, you you work with they are generally doing it for their health and for well-being and i have the saying that lycra doesn't lie my word okay you know i'm not exactly a thin whippet snake but there are unfortunately yeah body positivity or not insulin resistance starts at the waistline you know and you you can you can see it and then you look at the colored water in their bottle mm. kind of like yeah how long are you riding for 40 k's okay 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 so you did carb load i hope yeah no um so i just think to myself well there's something wrong here there's something wrong here so this is where it all began it starts at the nutrition level. Medicine today is simply reactive. That's it. It's not proactive. Hello, viewers. Rich here. Apologies to interrupt your viewing. Uh, Sean and I go well off topic uh, in the next section. Uh, we go deep into conspiracy theories, uh, and a few controversial topics which some listeners may not appreciate. Uh, for this reason, I have cut this out of this podcast, uh, but I have added it to the YouTube channel. It is available on the link below. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. If this sounds like something that you would like to listen to, uh, please click on the link below and view and listen to it there. Thank you. Okay, so when you sit, when your doctor goes and tells you that you must have five cups of fruit and vegetables today because he's actually only done or she has only done two weeks of nutrition in the seven years of study um, ask him how big the cups are and which vegetables and i can tell you now they will probably not be able to tell you and my doctor that i go to yeah my doctor at least acknowledges that she knows what i'm i mean she i mean I, i'm not mentioning names which is fine but she even tells her own children that in a physiology class when they get this is how we do it at home but this is how you're going to get your marks so you must answer it this way yeah that's right and i went through a similar thing when mm. i did my my nutrition course um i mm. had to jump through hoops in order to get my certification despite not believing the words that i was writing <clears throat> um, my tutor actually said to me that um you know part of uh, what we need to do once you're qualified is look at modern research and stay up to date with the latest clinical trials because she believed in what I believed in. She used to follow the likes of Dr. McCullough, and in fact, it was her that put me on to people like uh, such as uh, Dr. McCullough. Um, so I knew that she was on my wavelength, but I still had to write the things that I disagreed with in order to, to get my certification which means nothing. It means nothing because uh, what we are told in regards to nutrition, vegetables in particular, they're not as nutrient dense as, as we're led to believe. There's very little. They're not even. <laughs> no, it's like Anthony says, the plants are trying to kill you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not trying, but basically they are. Um, every And the whole concept of veganism, which um, is the concept of you they don't consume a sentient being mycelium which are mushrooms ladies and gentlemen are probably the most intelligent species on the planet they yes they are sentient they can actually transfer messages across the oceans scientifically proven there are many documentaries. So if you, as a vegan, 
eat mushrooms. Just know that you're consuming a sentient, intelligent species. Plain and simple. Okay. The notion that plants themselves are plant-based is bull shit with the emphasis on shit because the soil which has layers has a layer called hummus not the hummus you eat but the hummus that the plants eat and this layer you can use wikipedia to google h-u-m-u-s hummus soil hummus is made up of basically compost of decomposing insects animals and in some case humans if it's by a cemetery and that's where it's one of the most important layers of soil where the plants get the nutrients to thrive and survive so even the foods that you eat are not even plant-based come on animals you so, can't have life without death yeah you cannot have life yeah 100 percent. the cycle of life you go into the wild you come, unfortunately, you come across a lion. If you're a vegan and you shout out the lion, hey, I, I would never eat you up. I don't even eat animals. Oh, he's just, he just knows that you're just going to taste like another buck because you primarily eat plants. He doesn't care. Okay. And that's the cycle of life. A black hole which engulfs planets, okay, is effectively conivorous. It's all part of the matter which is made up of the universe and planets and everything. Okay. So it's all part of the cycle of life, okay? You go to a criminal with a criminal mind and he's about to attack you and you say, hey, I would never attack you. He's going to kill you. And that's how it is. He doesn't care. Yeah. You're, you have to understand it's called nature. You have to, it's the law of nature. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, and you're right. It, I don't think it, no matter what argument we get thrown um, at carnivores or meat eaters, every argument is easily put on its head. Uh, vegetables being highly nutritious. Well, let's, let, let's take a quick look at the nutritional profile in vegetables, for example. You know, we're told to eat carrots for retinol for vitamin a my, my mother used to say to me eat your carrots so you can see in the dark carrots do not contain any vitamin a they do not contain any retinol no plants do uh, they contain something called beta carotene which is a precursor yeah. that needs to be acted upon by an enzyme called bcmo to convert it into the active form of retinol and to do so it's depleted by 21 times um, meaning that it, it's leaving the body devoid of other nutrients because it needs to pull these other parts in from the body to make up this, this form of retinol. B vitamins, incredibly low in plants. They do not contain any cobalamin, vitamin B12. Um, this is why people who only eat plants suffer with a vitamin B12 deficiency. Uh, folate is low, which is essential for the methylation cycle. Niacin, vitamin B3, pyridoxine, vitamin B6, all low in plants. Vitamin D, we cannot get from plants. Um, vitamin K, we, we're told to consume kale for vitamin K. Kale contains zero vitamin K, none at all. Yet, in the supermarket, when you pick up a pack of kale, there's a stamp on there that says high in vitamin K. And it's a fallacy because kale contains vitamin K1. The human body needs vitamin K2. Um, plants do not contain choline, creatine, carnosine, carnitine, taurine, all of these things which, which we need. Um, plants are not a good source of vitamins and minerals, period. <clears throat> Fiber is not essential. That's another, another carbohydrate that is not essential. Um, and as 100%. you said, it, you know, we, we are told, 100%. as you know, from your, from your, 100%. You know, from, from your diet, 100%. Issues. I, I'm more regular now eating no, no fiber. Yeah. Then, then, uh, the, it is the biggest, maybe for some, you know, I don't want to be. I, 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 I don't want to be that vegan shouting at somebody at a at a meat restaurant. Or I don't want to. I, I, I never ever go into another person's page and and and, and attack them. I, 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 I do want to have an open mind and say, you know what? Maybe there is a genetic or 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 a, a race that that thrive on on plants. Okay, but what I what I do stand up against is governmental guidelines 
restrictions and and um, and uh, the medical dogma clumping us under all one umbrella. Specifically, what's happening in the United States of America, where they actually have labeled steak less nutritious than Smarties or M and M's. Wow! And 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 flipping don't. I mean, no. I am a fifty-one-year-old male. I eat blocks of butter. High cholesterol. I only have cholesterol. I worry my cholesterol is too low. Okay. <laughs> I, know. I, 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 ride, I do ridiculous cycling. If I, I, getting onto the performance side of it, I spent last year disproving the fact, the myth you need carbohydrates to pre- perform at high intensities. Yeah. The age of 50. Yeah. I, I, I was, I've, I was, I've been, a, I mean, I've, I've been called out by this 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 raving uh, vegan Australian dude who told me that it's non it's bullshit that I'm doing these speeds without being in ketosis. He's uh, he's did a I was actually very flattered. In fact, I thought myself, oh, he's got a huge following. Uh, the durian right the durian rider. Um, apparently, I uh, hear he's also got false teeth as well from all the fruit and the sugar and everything. I actually have also seen now on 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 YouTube that there's a, this whole sort of um, fuel, fuel your rise with sugar, and all of these people come back and they have to brush their teeth. Uh, that is a bloody absurd. Can't you? Don't you get it? If it rots your teeth, it's not good for you. You only have you only have two sets. One is the milk teeth, which is high in lactose, sugar. You lose those teeth for a reason, okay? Because once you're off the milk, you have the meat. And if you have the meat and you don't have the sugar, you never have to worry about the de- your dental health. That's why. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So all of these, you know, using the sugar to feel the rides. No, you're not fueling your rides. You're feeding your addiction. That's all yeah. you're doing. You are just, it's not energy. It's not energy. You are preventing your body to go into a shock of addiction. The energy that you have is actually in the fat stores, okay, and the glycerol and the protein that you consume via the meat to convert that into glucose, and you'll get the fast, the, the explosive energy via there, okay? Not, not the sugar. All you're doing is you are preventing the withdrawal symptoms. So that hyperglycemia that you're, that you're feeling is not the, the glycogen being depleted. That is the story that the scientists have come up with, okay, to explain what's going on there. No. That's the allergic reaction, the negative response you're getting, okay? For, for Pete's sake, if you have to come home and you have to brush your teeth because you've got fur and all this shit over your teeth and, and peeling your enamel, okay? You're just keeping your dentist in business. Really, it's, it's preposterous. They, 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 have to, they, they put so much sugar in, they have to add lemon juice, they have to add salt to to bring down the, the sweetness it's the most it's it's fructose and it's uh, it's it's what is cane sugar it's fructose and sucrose it's basically one it's the worst it's pure poison and you're falling for it oh the, my best my best this is my best but the pros do it yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah well do you know what? There's okay. a question okay. for that as well. Ask the pro. Do they actually do it? Pro, so, but ask the pro what pressure's in his tire. Ask the pro how heavy his, his weight is. Ask the pro what price the shoes are. You know, if he knows what the industry is. Ask the pro how to change a tire. You'll be shocked. And it's on flipping YouTube. Hi, they actually make a joke of it. They go to some of these races and they ask the pro, so what bar tie, what, what bar pressure, uh, my mechanic put it in this morning. Uh, how heavy is your bike? Um, I think it's around about eight and they take a scale. No, you're out. You know, you, no, you, the, the most important, your sponsor, your bike sponsor, the most important thing while you are there, the bike in which you ride, you don't even know the weight. You don't even know the pressure in your tire. How can you call yourself a pro, a professional? And I must do what the pros do. Right. Pros don't t- t- train themselves. They have coaches. They have doctors. 
They have a they have a director sportive that tells them what to ride, when to ride, how much to ride, when to attack, and where to attack. And you can win or you can't win. Where's the professionalism in that? In my opinion, there is none. So to do what the pros do, nap. Yeah, makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> and a lot of the pros, uh, it does make you wonder, are they actually, because I think there's more ketogenic or low-carb athletes than we're led to believe. Um, give you an example. There's uh, a gentleman that I'm working with, uh, a young boy uh, in his early 20s. Uh, his dad came to me recently, who's a GP, and he believes that this is the way forward for athletic performance as well as health and well-being. And he is low-carb ketogenic. Uh, I think six to eight weeks into ad adaptation, he was pushing out nearly, in fact, I've written it down, 387 watts for nearly four hours on a bike ride. And that what? Is, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's, is it, how old was he? 22, I believe. I'll send you this oh, okay. after. So it was, but nearly, he must be of an elite, he must be of, a, of a caliber, which is six love. Yeah. He's, um, because, um, and incredible, but he's ketogenic. He's ketogenic. And yeah. this was the first time that he, he performed at that intensity. He managed to maintain, I think it was 90% of his VO2 max for four hours, which shows that you can cycle at a super high intensity for an incredibly long period of time. Now he's ketogenic. I would, but that is, that is like, that is a level which is, and how much does he weigh? Because I mean, that, that, for me, for me, what, what is, for me, what is important, just when I talk about how much does he weigh, for me, what is important is energy expenditure. How much, how much energy? Are, for me, it's not the speed or, or, or the intensity. For me, it's like showcasing, well, what do you mean you've got to refuel? I've just burned 4,000 calories without any refueling. I just burned 6,000 calories without any re refueling. So it's the energy expenditure. So basically, um, for me, it's more, you know, well, where's the energy coming from? Because you've got this information site established credentials confirmed acknowledged telling you that you need carbohydrates this guy has just gone and burned 5000 calories riding at world tour training speeds okay and he had salt and water yeah um so how does that work who how, is he lying this guy he must be lying because you are the you are the ref. You are the the ref. You you're the gods of cycling. You know. Yeah. But this guy must be lying. And and yeah. that's the thing. So so this guy, um, I've asked <clears throat> if he can promote the lifestyle, uh, or even have, uh, you know, my badge Keto Pro on on his kit, and he he's declined. He, he's happy to do stuff outside of the circuit, but he's worried that it'll ostracize him from the community. Um. And that's how tight the community is. The second you go against the grain, you are ostracized from that community. You, you are, uh, all the sponsors are sugar companies. So he's, he's going to throw any potential sponsorship deals away. So he is ketogenic. Um, and there's lots of other low-carb ketogenic athletes who don't tell you that they're ketogenic. Some of these top elite athletes are ketogenic. Chris Froome was, was low-carb ketogenic. Um, when we look at um, um, only he, he, he was low carb in comparison to the other cyclist, he wasn't technically because um, uh, he was still he was still ingesting carbohydrate to utilize for the explosive mm -hmm. the explosive yeah. bouts. Uh, um, but he was implementing from a weight loss perspective, which people do get. And even though even though I'd love to jump on the bandwagon and say he was keto, he he, he actually wasn't. He just basically implemented a, a more stricter regime. To attack those uh, additional weights um, uh, go, go, going going forward. I mean, he does eat a, I would say, a better balanced diet than most than most pros. I've seen, I've seen some horrific, horrific diet dietary choices of these young uh, modern pros. And you know, the the thing is, you have to understand that addiction is so much stronger than performance, and the youth and the the mainstream. You know, when they see their pros, their, their their role models consuming these these car products, and then they stop off at the 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 the, the coffee shops and they have the pastries and the Coca Cola and and they have the Haribos and they they 
they're getting this, this addict. It's like basically mainlining cocaine. Okay. And you are justifying it from the aspect that you you idolize that person and he does it. And your, your doctor says that you must have a low, low fat, high carbohydrate diet. So it must be healthy for you. And then you've got governmental guidelines telling you that it's healthy for you. And they're just keeping you sick and they're keeping you a prisoner. And you don't know what, what it is to be liberated. So carry on because I think I've interrupted. Yeah, no, that's fine. It, uh, touch, touching base with what you just said, I think when you look at pro athletes um, in their 30s, you know, late 30s, they are retiring because their bodies are spent. They've had this um, years and years of, uh, of addiction. Uh, their body has been abused. Um, <clears throat> and even at a cellular level, you know, when we create energy through cellular respiration, uh, we use something called NAD plus and NADH. Are you familiar with these? NAD plus? I have actually heard of it. I'm not too, I'm not too adept in it, but uh, I have actually heard of them. But so carry on. I, I, NAD plus, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is part of cellular respiration. We create energy. We all have NAD plus, and it's converted into NADH for us to, to, to produce energy. Um, as we age, this level declines, and this is what leads to oxidative stress and us looking older, and our bodies becoming um, less compliant and more frail. Uh, glucose. Every time we process glucose for energy, one glucose molecule costs the body four of these NAD plus molecules, lowering this NAD plus to NADH ratio. When we are ketogenic, to process one BHB molecule costs the body one NAD plus molecule. Enhancing at a cellular level, our body's ability to be more uh, efficient by 400%. So ketone production saves the body 400 times, basically. It's, it's four or four times uh, more efficient at a cellular level. So that's four times less damage, and it's four times more efficient energy. And this is why I believe athletes such as yourself in your 50s and beyond are still super competitive and becoming even more competitive because our body is expending less of these NAD plus molecules. And this is why I believe these, these carb athletes are spent and burnt out uh, and end up gaining you know, stupid amounts of weight after they finish competing because they are in fact exactly that I would, I would love that i believe they all they all insulin resistant and they've got metabolic syndrome that's why all of these pro endurance athletes they get they swell they get like a triple i mean you must see i mean as much as i respect greg lamond i mean he's also got cancer he's got leukemia to this day his greatest rival died of bowel cancer at the age of 51 Jacques Gatil died of bowel cancer at the age of um, also in his fifties. Um, um, if you look at the likes of um, Carlos Sastra, triple chin, he was a, a Tour de France winner in the, in the uh, two thousand and eight, I think. Uh, you look at uh, Floyd Landis. Okay, sure, he, you know he became a, a big marijuana user and everything. Also, he's deck. He's like swollen. Okay, even Lance Armstrong, he's like he's he's got like a I've seen a couple of pictures. Even even he's still like, very active, but he's also got, you know, there's no there's there's no like shreddedness on on you know he's he's just got so much water retention and, and he's swollen. You take a look at the likes of Eddie Merckx. He's a whale. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't give a shit if he's won five Tour de France. How is he? How is he? To look, how he looks today? You, you can't rip. You can't do that as a sportsman and then look like a. You know, have health issues when you post post your exercise, you post your 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 career. What are you talking? You're supposed to be a represent throughout. You're a great champion. Remain a great champion. Be like a David Goggins. You know, be a, be today. Don't have the excuse. Well, you know, I've stopped training and I'm. No, the reason why because you stopped training, but you you your hunger hormones is so warped and distorted from all the shit that you put into your body. You know. You take a look at all the Bjarni Reese, the guy that went off to uh, uh, um, Jan Ulrich. That guy's got, he, he looks like Jabba the Hat. But you were a great champion. You lost all that weight to become 6.7 kilos per kilogram. Why did you end up that way? Because your sport's not healthy. That's why. When are the, when are the pros going to actually stand up and say, you know what? I can't, I can no longer do the sport anymore because my team won't allow me to become ketogenic. They won't. 
there's too much money involved because wherever the science is leads me back to the money that's saying follow the science but it always leads me back to the money yeah. it's scary to be on your it's scary to be on your bone your the, the ass of your bones i'm there every single month okay but i won't back down yeah it the things that i've seen people achieve through being low carb and ketogenic is absolutely incredible and it literally goes against everything that we are told but it makes perfect sense when you break the science down and explain to people about nutrition about the effects of lectins and intestinal permeability um and these nutrients block in these anti-nutrients block in the absorption of these proteins allowing you to heal and repair and recover um this enhancement of beta hydroxybutyrate at a cellular level to in, in enhance performance uh it's there in black and white, but people don't want to see it because, as you say, it's it's an addiction. It's an addiction that they um, they don't want to walk away from, and they are bombarded by media and, as you say, their peers and other people that they are competing against. And I think the only way that you know we are going to turn that around is by doing the things that you were doing, going out competing and showing people that these things can be done. Now, I I used to be. Um, oh. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not actually competing. So basically, um, I never ever. First, firstly, I, I I maybe ride with somebody if I go and do a, an event. If a partner wants me to go and do a, an event, I ride completely alone. I also ride. Um, I, I ride. I do rides which are no one would do in the right mind because they're mind numbing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they 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 literally. So I be see. I've got a. a I wrote a, a blog about it, but. I, I ride alone. I don't like. I don't like to be around people, quite frankly, because I don't like to be around somebody if they cannot stimulate my, my. They can. I. I don't like boisterous, banter. I don't like joking. I, I like quiet, and I like to be inside my own head. Um, so that's why I choose to be alone, um, because I just I'm happier that way. Um, if I am with somebody, it's because they have a lot to offer me, and I generally shut up and listen. Okay, which is very sometimes very seldom when I am with somebody. But the reason why I say this is because I, occasionally I might go and do a race for a partner. But what I do do is compete with myself. I go out and I smash it. I smash it. I smash it hard. I don't stick around. I cane myself. Okay, because every time I clip in and I go and ride, I make it count. Because I need somebody to question it. I need somebody to say, hang on, why is this guy doing, how can this guy do this? Is it real? I need that to happen. If, it, if, if I just go and post another ride, it's the same sort of thing. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm aesthetically, I'm not this thing that everyone will flock to. And I'm not a, I'm not a person who, oh, he's such a nice guy. And I'm not that, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. If you want the hard, cold facts and a little bit of conspiracy, I'm that guy. But I'm not, you know, I've, I, 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 I have to make it count. You know, I hurt. I've got a scoliosis too. Okay. Sometimes my back, when I get back from a rider, I got, my back goes into a seizure. I've got, a, you know, when I had the kidney stones, he said, you know, you've got a kidney stone, but you know, you've got a scoliosis, like a really bad one. I mean, I'm skewing everything. I, I hurt. Because it's my choice, my choice. No one, no one says you must. I say I must. I say I must. I never ever, I never woke up one morning and I said I'm gonna, I choose to do this. I'm gonna go out there and showcase to the world that you must wake up and look up and wake up and stop being bullshitted by by another person. No, no, no man or woman should judge for you. Should be able to be the decider of your future. You are not a slave. Okay, so that is my choice, which happened organically. And the reason why it happened was because um, almost three years ago, um, my niece, who had been suffering from Hashimoto's disease, and her endocrinologist said to her that you're going to be on medication for the rest of your life. She was grossly overweight, and I, and I mean that. She came to me after being uh, as a, in her early teens. She was a vegan. She went to a very school which promoted that. 
Um, she later stopped being a vegan, but she was still consuming the wrong foods. And she came to me because I had broken my clavicle and I, I spent a week there. And she said, Uncle Sean, please tell me about the keto, di keto diet. So I said to him, you know, I can tell you all about it. But you need to invest in yourself. But what you can do is you can do a little bit of research yourself and I can come and guide you and say if this is bullshit or if that's not bullshit. And she did it. And she started with one meal a day. And she struggled because I stayed there for the week. She continued. Today, she has lost over 45, I think she's lost 50 kilograms. And wow. she's a short girl. She looks like a movie star. But more profoundly, she reversed her Hashimoto's disease and she's off all medication. Incredible. And the endocrinologist is out of the picture. Absolutely incredible. So when I saw that happen, how many other people are suffering from this? Yeah. How many other people are depressed and suicidal? How many other people are depressed and suicidal? I've been there. I've been there myself. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. And this is, I think, why I've persevered and pushed forward on my journey and sold my house um, I put everything into educating other people. Um, I make very little. I pay myself next to nothing because I love what I do. I love educating people. Uh, a lot of my, a doctor will earn hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. Um, I pay myself. I, my, my hourly rate works out around about three pounds an hour, genuinely. Um, so I'm, I'm not. <laughs> you're lucky I don't even have an, you're lucky I don't even have an hourly rate. <laughs> So, I'm, I'm I'm being dead serious. I yeah. I I don't I don't I I get a, a I've got some coaching. I do some online calls, and they happen very far and few between. Yeah. Um. And I I really am someone who wings it month to month. Yeah. Um. I oh, snap. I I, I, I have yeah. I've I've lost partnerships. I don't know why. I think I'm a really good role model, but unfortunately, I don't fit the mold. Um, and um, I've got some small partners which 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 give me some financial income every month. But I literally I'm either selling old kit or equipment, really. But you know, like you say, I love what I do. Yeah. I wake up in the morning for this. Yeah. If somebody says to me, "You've helped me change my life," I know that I've 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 been I've made my life worth worth living. And like I say, I've seen I've seen what I've seen. My niece met a morph into this. She always calls herself a moth, and she became a butterfly. Like, um, her yeah. first tattoo was a, of a moth, and uh, and and she is today. She's a movie star. Yeah, like she's a beautiful, of... deep. Yeah, she is, and 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 that is why I do it. Because if I can save one life, I will save the entire world. Because hopefully, they pay it forward. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a philanthropist. I'm not. I'm not a philanthropist. I'm a grumpy, old, self-centered, <laughs> selfish person. I don't like to be around other people, but I don't like to be lied to. Yeah. I hate liars. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, and I think what you're doing is is absolutely fantastic. But we certainly yeah. we're not doing this for for the money. Um, I I used to earn yeah. a, a lot of money as as a as a purchasing manager for an electrical engineering company. Um, for the first couple of years of running my business, I didn't pay myself a wage at all. I was living off um, the, the the sale of of my house. Um, yeah. And now, as I say, you know, it some months if the business is struggling, um, I don't take a wage, but it uh, I, I take such a little amount out of the business. I I haven't been on holiday uh, in probably nine years. Um, and I work almost every day, you know, doing this. I, I do a lot of consultations for free. So I educate people yeah. for free um, where I can. Uh, I do charge for consultations as well, depending on, um, you know, what the situation is and, and what my availability is. But it, uh, we do lots of free public speaking events, but exactly the same as you, I'm in this to spread the word. Uh, and this is why I began yeah. competing uh, originally as a bodybuilder. Um, and as you know, I've come away from that and I began running and cycling. Um, and, this is why I, I push forward and try to do things. Every time I go out for a run or ride a bike is to show people that you don't need carbohydrates. So to put it into perspective, I, um, I, I did an 80 mile bike ride recently. Um, and that's the longest bike ride. It stepped up from 45 miles. 
So 80 miles it was quite a long ride for me. Uh, I went with a group of guys who are Iron Men. So they have, you know, they've yeah. passed Iron Man several times. Um, you know, they've done 80 miles time and time again, but it, it was a long ride for me. Um, they were carrying bottles and bottles of water, energy drinks, chocolate bars, sweets. I had one bottle of water that contained electrolytes, my Keto Pro electrolytes and some Keto Pro MCT powder, one bottle. Uh, and that's all I used for the 80 miles. Uh, and at the end of the 80 mile, um, I had the highest average speed as well. Um, and I could, I could have continued to, I, I could have continued. Um, yeah. To, to the point that I, I, I got back and I, I was at 77 miles. So I went back out of the road just to round it up to 80. Um, <laughs> it hurt, it hurt. But you know, 80 miles is a long way for someone who isn't used to riding. Uh, I'm literally a couple of months into riding, and I think we were averaging um, just under 18 mile an hour on a course that had an elevation of somewhere between three and a half and four thousand foot. Um, so it's you know it wasn't it wasn't flat by any means, and that was um, yeah. something I was quite proud of. But everyone else had to stop and refuel and put this energy gel in and, and these carbs and these sweets, and these are people that have been riding for a long time. Uh, and I'm not yeah. saying I'm a better cyclist than they are, but I, I'm not by any means. But the fact that I, I, you know, kept up with them on one bottle of water that contained electrolytes and MCT, uh, while they had three or four bottles and their sweets and chocolate bars is is testament. And, and this is why I do what I do. I love cycling. I, I've become really addicted to it. It's uh, it, it's my new it's my new drug, if you like that, and running. But what I found <laughs> is because I'm new to it. <laughs> I'm struggling yeah. with the recovery because it, it, I'm using muscle that you know I've never used in that respect before. But it's coming on leaps and bounds. Um, I competed in in a duathlon recently, and um, I did quite respectably in the duathlon, considering you know I'm new to the sport. Yeah. But it, um, uh, how long have you how long have you been running for? Huh? Um, so just like. before just before Christmas, uh, and that was on on the turbo. So. On the, the stages bike, yeah. I've got a stages yeah. bike, so yeah. I was I was doing that during the. Oh, have you? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to yeah. stages. Um. So I was using <laughs> that through throughout the winter, uh, and I've probably been outside on a bike, um, around twenty times now. I reckon in in my life. So since... okay. So I, I I I can I can kind of give you my my the reason why you you're struggling with recovery because. I heard you talking to um, Anthony about the fact that you you don't have um, good genet you don't have good genetics, but you probably have got good genetics via dormant genes from your other family members, which you probably don't know. However, you have got a very good foundation of strength, and your your problem is what what the what is referred to as neuromuscular overload. So your cardiovascular is able to perform at that level, but your muscles are not um, become neuromuscular efficient. So it's you're just doing too much too soon. Yeah, um, which you, which your, your your internal is capable of, and that that l slow recovery is owing to the fact that you've just it's like basically getting a, a cramp from neuromuscular overload, and not a lack of electrolytes. You're just demanding too much. And your body's just saying, "Hey, hang on, buddy, <laughs> just slow the fuck down," you know. So, and it's happened to. I, I know this because, okay, I mean, I'm I'm a little older than you, but the the it is it is a case because when you come out of a sport, any sport that you've been efficient at, specifically with bodybuilding, and you can see that you've got a fucking serious core there, you've got the core strength, and you've got that physical prowess. And you've you've got that cardiovascular engines somewhere, so you've that it's just putting your body into you're not conditioned there. You know yeah, that's all it is, and it's just like slow slow down. It's and I do the same thing. Sometimes I I, I will rest for two weeks, and then all of a sudden I go and smash a 150 or 200 kilometer ride, and I wonder why I'm fucked because yeah. most people don't do that. They kind of like ease into it. I go out and just clap it. Um, and that is because I've got the engine, but I'm just, I should, you know, but one would think that I've learned from that. I haven't. It's it's in your nature. But the point is, if you carry on doing it and you get tired and fucked up from it, you just don't just understand it. Yeah, I agree. Just, yeah. 
And I- it's it's the, the the riding that I've taken on board um, at the same time as running. So I've done very little running in my life. And I began yeah. running and cycling at the same time. So it's coming from two different angles. Um, yeah, too much too soon. Uh, I think I need to learn to recover and listen to my body. Um, but still, mm. the rate of improvement is, you know, is, is phenomenal. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, this year I'll learn to understand my body a little bit more, learn more about time frames for recovery and, 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 and listen to my body and, and how it feels. But it, um, yeah. But yeah, I'm loving the cycling. So any tips that you've got moving forward would be massively. Yeah, you know, it's cycling. Cycling is um, I, I, it's my life. Um, I I don't I'm not too enamored with the cycling world because it's become very much an affluent sport, an elite sport. Um, but I understand. I do understand. It is it's a it's 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 a it's a hard for me to really say um it's a, it's kind of a love hate relationship because i am i have created this persona for myself and this so i'm not kind of it's it's and i and i accept i've always been a loner so it's not like something but it's it's a struggle for me but because I can do it alone and I don't need the recognition from, from mates or friends. And, um, and uh, sometimes I even forget about the bikes I even ride because only when I stop at a robot or I stop at a, a shop to get some more water or something like that, somebody will say, hey, that's an amazing bike. And I realize, oh, GCR, it actually is kind of an amazing bike. But the, I, I don't need to have a fancy bike to go and get the recognition from from somebody else or to, 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 to be accepted. It's, it's not what it's about. I, I, I value my equipment and my partners because they help me to ca- carry on and carry out my message. And I value that more than anything else because I'm heavily dependent on that because there's no ways, six ways from Sunday, I could ever, ever consider cycling if I never had partners, which I am so grateful, uh, grateful about. It's, it's something which, yeah. So, but it's it's difficult for me because, yeah, it's um I'm not a bad person, but I I know that a lot of people just don't like me. A lot. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I've got wrong. more I've got more haters than followers, <laughs> really. Yeah. And uh, like, I may not have a lot of followers, but people know, they really. I mean, uh, my my ex partner, she was riding here on her own when she was here with me and I she went and did her own ride and she she came across and that's an interesting interesting story about adaptation and 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 being able to to perform being ketogenic and advantages um she 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 um she was out riding on alone, alone and four guys came up behind her is oh, that's a sacco's chick that's a, a, that's a sacco chick or something like that she promptly dropped them all um, on the on the uphill, and they tried. They were sl- clicking down, switching down. I mean, she is a formidable athlete. She's a fucking strong woman, and uh, she's actually one of the few. Pe- I mean, cause I I did some. I've done some hard, full contact, uh, old traditional karate. Like really, I've got a, my whole my whole face is all skewed from being beaten badly. I know what tough toughness is, uh, and uh, she's she's a she's one seriously tough individual, regardless of sex. And she became ketogenic upon meeting me, and she did a race that race that I did with me, and she was fast. Okay, we had a tailwind, but doesn't we read them? She was faster than my original time. Same race. She beat some of the elite men. And she did it without refueling. 198 Ks. And the guy that we were with, okay, strong rider. He was bonking. I had to push him. I gave her a little bit of a push too. Um, she hated when I talked like, you always have to talk, make it about you. But it's true. I gave you a push. I helped you. But she was crying from the pain. And she also had a hypothalamic tumor removed from her brain three weeks prior to that. Wow. Wow. So that woman is one 
seriously tough, strong woman. Yeah. And she, I can take my hats off to her. I've never, she used to cry behind me. Okay. She, she came here for two or three months. And she, and because I, I can't ride slowly. I, I can't. I can't. I, I just, for me to ride slowly, it's like I don't understand that coffee shit. You know, I don't. And she's, I mean, yes, I was riding slower, but sure, that poor woman, the shit that I put her through, but she was ketogenic. She broke all of her PBs here. She, she just, she, she, we took, she fucking, she vomited the one day. She sat my wheel. Okay. And because there was an oak behind us uh, that I just, I do, you see these signals. I don't like people riding on my wheel. If they don't come and say hi or, or greet me, I, 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 I explode. And that woman fucking sat, sat my wheel, vomited afterwards, projectile vomited. Never, just, I've never, I have so much respect for that. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, ketogenic. I mean, today she has a little bit of carbs. If she doesn't like to be, she's, she's not. She doesn't like to be an outcast. So if there's like rice or something at a function, she'll eat it. But she is primarily. She was a vegetarian for twenty years prior to 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 meeting me. Wow. That changed, radically changed. Um, she was carnivorous to the to. I mean, she fell in love with our beef jerky built on. It was like, but the, she she had a only a year's adaptation, um, and she did all of her PBs like. She destroyed everything every every day. Like she'd go for a ride. She'd become the queen of the mountains here. Um, every day there's queen of the mountains. Even on our coffee slow ride, she was queen of the mountains somewhere. Wow. Um, it was it was, it was a like she yeah, like five six ten queen of the mountains one ride. I mean, if we went for a hard thing, queen of the mountains. I mean, she would drop the oaks here. Um and uh, ketogenic, one year. Love it. One year adaptation, yeah. Yeah. So, Love it. And she Absolutely. was a person. She was a person that would have double noodles. She used to. She's a. She's a. She works. She's got a good financial job, and she works at home. And her, but she would order like double noodles from the Italian restaurant. She would have a kilo of chocolate a, a, a night. A kilo, she said. I said that's a thousand grams, Melly. You can't have that much. I had that. She, I mean, she was. There's pictures of her where she's she lost twenty kilos. I mean, I mean, the pictures are um, probably still there on her IG and and the right in the beginning. But she became, yeah, incredible. And she's strong, eh? Strong and endurance strong. And everyone thinks that she's. She always has these selfies and these smiling faces, but she's, a, she's that woman, eh? Yeah, but ketogenic. Keto strong. Ketogenic. She yeah. asked me. I didn't tell her. She asked me about it. I didn't. Uh, she tell me. Yeah. She did try it. She 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 tried it before she even knew me, uh, but she did it incorrectly. And all I did was I just gave her some hacks, which was the fish oil, the salmon oil, because uh, I use it as energy. I, I take like I said, take two a day. I take sometimes ten or fifteen a day, um, and uh, the salt. And then of course um, she wasn't taking enough fat. She was. Uh, she didn't have enough energy. Um, the she 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 just wasn't her providing, her, and, and that was the game changer for her. People always complicate the shit out of things. So the, you want to complicate the shit out of your life? Eat carbs. That's yeah. when you complicate it. Then you need to have a, a a stem, and you need to like list it what time you need to eat, and then what this type of food you need to eat, and that type of you know. They were, All right, that's my nutritional st- strategy. Yeah, easy, easy stuff. Uh-huh. Sean, uh-huh. it. Uh... Mm. we've gone well off track of my original um, <laughs> speaking points. So we can do it again. I think yeah. that this, this was my next question. Um, yeah. I think, I think we need to arrange another to come through uh, the list of other bits mm. that I've got, but listen, it's been a pleasure speaking. Um, where mm. can people find you, Sean? Um, on Instagram, uh, Sean underscore Sacco um, on Twitter, Sean underscore Sacco. I'm on Strava. Strava has been incredible to get my message out. I'm on Sean Sacco, Sakonovsky. There's only one of me. Um, um, and uh, those are the yeah, those are the main the main platforms: uh, Instagram and Strava and Twitter. Um, and um, but please, can we can we do a live chat on on my on my IG as well, like oh, just sure. an hour or forty five minutes? Yeah. Because what you, when you the way you spoke about Ansel Keys and 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 the, and the seven study and the what you spoke that just needs to be heard. 
yeah. that is that is like diamonds. That was like, that, and also the way you sp- spoke. Oh, yeah. that was like, yeah. wow, I like that for sure. Oh, for so sure. Yeah. yeah, we'll get that. We'll get that booked in, and uh, yeah, and we'll chat again. <laughs>